Hey there, fellow pop culture enthusiasts. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving into some juicy drama from the world of Westeros. That's right, we're talking about House of the Dragon and a mind-blowing revelation from the latest episode. So grab your dragon eggs and let's get into it. All right, so episode three of House of the Dragon season two just dropped and Holy Targaryen did it deliver. We got a bombshell that basically confirms what many of us have been complaining about for years. You know that thing where every other Targaryen is named Aegon? Well, turns out it's not just annoying for us viewers, it's literally the reason for the entire civil war. Let's break this down, shall we? So in this episode, we see Rhaenyra sneaking into King's Landing like a boss. She's got some questions for Allison about what went down when King Viserys kicked the bucket. And boy, does she get answers. Allison spills the tea that Viserys' last words were about Aegon and the prince that was promised now any sane person would think, oh, he must be talking about his son Aegon right wrong. Turns out Viserys was actually rambling about Aegon the Conqueror and his prophetic dream. You know, the whole song of ice and fire business that ties into the future White Walker threat but because there are approximately 7 million Aegons in Targaryen history, Alicent got it all twisted. Now, let's be real for a second. This name confusion isn't the only reason for the Dance of the Dragons. The show makes it clear that tensions between Team Green and Team Black have been simmering for years. But Alicent's misunderstanding definitely poured some wildfire on that flame. Kind of hilarious when you think about it. All those years of fans complaining about the repetitive names and now it's canon that it caused a massive war. It's like the writers are trolling us but in the best way possible. But here's where it gets even more interesting. The show drops this little nugget of info, that by the time we get to Jon Snow's era, there have been 12 known Aegon Targaryens. 12. Did these people learn nothing from their civil war? Now, I can't help but wonder what if Allison and Rhaenyra had just sat down and had a proper chat about this earlier? Imagine the conversation. Rhaenyra, so why exactly did you think my dad wanted your son on the throne? Allison, he said, Aegon and Prince that was promised. Rhaenyra, you do realize there are like five other Aegons in our family tree, right? Both. Oh crap. But of course that didn't happen. Instead, we got years of war, death, and dragon on dragon violence. All because the Targaryens couldn't come up with more creative baby names. It's like if the entire Marvel Universe collapsed because everyone was named Steve. Now let's talk about why the Targaryens are so obsessed with the name Aegon in the first place. It's not just because it sounds cool, although let's be real, it does. It's all about tradition and power. Aegon the Conqueror was the OG badass who united the Seven Kingdoms. By naming their kids after him, the Targaryens are basically saying, hey, remember how awesome and powerful we are? Yeah, that's not changing anytime soon. But there's another layer to this Aegon obsession that the show hints at. Remember that whole prince that was promised prophecy? Well, it seems like each generation of Targaryens thought their Aegon might be the one to fulfill it. It's like a really messed up game of generational hot potato. The irony, of course, is that the actual prince that was promised our boy Jon Snow didn't even know he was an Aegon for most of his life. Talk about a plot twist. Now, I've got to give props to the writers of House of the Dragon for addressing this long-standing fan complaint in such a clever way. They took something that could have been a simple continuity issue and turned it into a major plot point. That's some next-level writing right there. But here's a thought, what if this name confusion isn't just limited to the Targaryens? I mean, how many Brandons has House Stark had? How many Tyrions in House Lannister? Is all of Westerosi history just one big game of nominative determinism gone wrong? In conclusion, folks, House of the Dragon has just confirmed what we've all been thinking for years too many Egon spoil the broth. Or in this case, burn the kingdom to the ground. It's a brilliant way to address a fan complaint while also deepening the lore of the world. So what do you think? Is this revelation as mind-blowing to you as it is to me? Or did you see it coming from a mile away? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. You don't want to miss out on more Westerosi hot takes. And remember, the next time you're thinking of naming your kid after a famous ancestor, maybe don't. You never know what kind of civil war you might accidentally start. Stay cool, dragon riders, until next time.